I want to ask you a question. What is the most common form of writing? If you're thinking it's expository, explaining something, you're wrong. The reality is it's about argumentation. It's about persuasion. That's what life is about. It's a constant tug of war between one side and another. Who is right? Who is wrong? Who's going to convince someone? Who's going to lose the battle? How's it going to work? That's why persuasive writing is so essential. As we dive into looking at persuasive writing, I want you to think that it is in many ways uh, an endeavor that can be broken down and understood in its parts. While yes, it works in a great cohesive way, understanding the elemental ways that persuasion works is going to help you truly become a better persuasive writer. When we approach a persuasive essay or doing an argument, we really need to make sure that, that we understand how to select a topic, okay? And it, it gets very difficult sometimes. We're just not really sure of, of what we want to write about. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at topic, and then we're going to see how we take that topic and build a thesis from it, right? Very important things to note is that in an argumentative, persuasive essay, you must have a debatable topic. It cannot be a fact, okay? Facts aren't debatable. You and I aren't going to sit around and debate whether or not Abraham Lincoln's the 16th president. So that's not going to be a topic for a persuasive essay. Now, you certainly can write an essay debating whether or not Abraham Lincoln is the best president, right? That's debatable. Someone could say, I don't think so. You know, I, I really think it's FDR or, you know what, if Ronald Reagan doesn't get his due or whatever it can be. That's debatable. We can have a debate. No reasonable person is going to argue with you about facts. They're not going to say, well, I don't know. I, I think there was a secret president, you know, right before James Buchanan. That's not going to happen. So that's why facts aren't debatable. All right. Reasonable people don't debate facts. OK, they they understand facts. They say, oh, that's scientific or whatnot. And they accept that. All right. So you need to make sure you're picking debatable topics. All right. The best topics, and this is something that we're going to continue to talk about in regards to research later, but the best topics are ones that can be researched and backed up by other sources. All right. So if it's a topic that's it's your opinion, but you can't really back it up with any real hard evidence, that may not be a topic you really want to write about. All right. So you don't want to choose a topic like, you know, who's right in an argument between you and your mom. That's not going to work very well. All right. Because probably you can't prove it. So there's really no need to, to write about it. So then when we have that topic, we really want to take a position. Right. You know, we, we, we want to talk about, you know, like we said, Abraham Lincoln being the best. Well, what's your position? You know, is he the best or is he kind of one of many of the best presidents? Thesis statements. are your position on the subject that you've selected, right? That's your position. And it really does, when you write it, it belongs in the introduction of your essay. We don't want to wait too long. We don't want to wait until, you know, halfway into the para or halfway into the body paragraph to say, oh, and this is how I feel. This is my opinion. It's too late. Your reader has to know that. So a thesis statement belongs in the introduction. Okay. Here's something that I think a lot of people get confused. Thesis statements are not questions. All right. That's a topic question. That's how you discover what your thesis is. You go, hmm, who's the best president? That's not a thesis. Okay. Because thesis, thesis statements are exactly that statements of your opinion. So we're not asking the question we're, we're making, we're stating our opinion. 
All right. Typically, we make those statements in the later part of our introduction. It's, it's not always going to have to be that way. So the longer your introduction, the less true that has to be. It's a matter of style, where you want to put it. But it's a really safe bet that the closer you are to your body paragraphs, that's where a thesis should go because it is a good natural transition from an introduction into the body paragraphs, which we're going to talk about here shortly, that end up being the support for that thesis. So as a quick review, thesis statements are statements, all right? That's an important part of them. They're found in your introduction and typically in the later part of an introduction, all right? Those thesis statements come from our, our topics, which are debatable because they're not facts. They're a, a debatable topic as we're writing persuasion. We're trying to argue with someone. That's how it works. If we're arguing, there has to be two sides of the debate. It can't be something that's already settled, all right? A general universal truth is not really debatable. So we need to make sure that whatever we're choosing is something argumentative. We pivot that into a thesis statement, not a question, where we put that in our introduction, because that's where it belongs. Mm -hmm.